Hi, I'm Kelly with CitrusCycles.ca. I'm here with Scott's eSpark 720. It is a full suspension e-bike powered by the Shimano Steps E8000. We've got 27.5 by 2.8 plus size tires, Fox suspension, Scott's innovative uh, twin lock uh, lockout system for the uh, suspension, and uh, we've got the 500 watt integrated Shimano Steps battery there really fun bike to ride. I'm going to take you on a test ride. I'm going to go through all the detailed specs, but for the uh, details on those specs, current pricing, set up an appointment to come try it here in beautiful Ladysmith, Vancouver Island, uh, or to ask questions, maybe I missed something in the video, head over to our website at citruscycles.ca. So we've got Shimano's E8000, uh, the Shimano Steps uh, mid-drive motor powering the bike here, lots of torque, very responsive, I really enjoyed riding it. It's well protected here, uh, we've got a bash guard on the bottom here, we've got a um, chain guide uh, up front here as well, which is great, keeps everything uh, on the drivetrain for you. And uh, with the mid-drive like the Shimano Steps, you're getting a lot of benefits. You are getting uh, better balance with the weight, and that's important on a bike like this. You know, this is a serious trail bike, you're going to be wanting be able to really be in control of this bike in some uh, very difficult riding conditions and you're going to be able to do that because you've really balanced the, the bike, the weight really well, having that in the middle there. Um, of course it also means we're leveraging our mechanical advantage of the drivetrain. So we've got a, a SRAM uh, X1 11 speed, uh, I think it's a up to a 42 tooth cassette on the back there. So huge climbing gear gives you the ability to really climb uh, hills really well. And when you change gears uh, to make it easier to climb, it's also directly impacting on the motor, making it easier for the motor as well. So lots of advantages to having a mid-drive like that, and of course, also easier to change a flat tire should you need to. Hopefully you don't. We do have uh, the ability to go tubeless. These are tubeless ready uh, tires. They're the Maxxis Recon Plus. They're 27.5 by 2.8. You can get the tire pressure uh, pretty low on these. I think they were saying about 17 PSI if you go tubeless. You could go even lower, and we do have some uh, puncture uh, protection in there as well. We have uh, the Recon Plus on the front and the rear. Really nice tires, actually. I really enjoyed uh, riding them so far. We have enough clearance here that you could probably go with uh, maybe even a 3, uh, 27.5 by 3, or if you wanted to bring that down to a 2.6, you've got that uh, flexibility there. As I mentioned, we do have the uh, Fox uh, suspension here. Uh, so up front we've got a uh, e-bike optimized Fox Performance 34. Uh, I've got a lot of experience with this fork. I really enjoy it. It's a really nice fork. It's nice to see Scott using e-bike specific components. So that means Fox has tuned this for an e-bike. An e-bike is heavier because we've got the battery and we've got the motor. So it's gonna handle a little bit differently. It's gonna respond differently. And, uh, you know, it's nice to have something that's been thought out to say, okay, this is an e-bike, how do we need to tune the fork? Let's make it nice and burly so it's gonna last a long time and uh, really nice to see that. Some other great features uh, Scott's included, massive 203 millimeter uh, rotors front and rear. And we've got the uh, Shimano uh, one finger hydraulic disc brakes, really responsive, really enjoyed the uh, amount of modulation those have coming down the hills, no problem with braking and of course those larger rotors are going to help keep the uh, heat down if you're worried about really long descents. On the back it's the uh, Fox Nude DPS. Uh, we've got uh, the ability with spacers to change the volume and tune it. Of course they're both uh, air shocks so we can adjust the air up front here uh, based on your riding preference and your weight and uh, we also have of course uh, some other uh, adjustments here. We've got rebound adjustments and uh, as I was mentioning they are using uh, Scott's twin lock lockout system here So right now it's fully open for a descent. If you need traction control You can uh, push that once there and that's going to tighten things up a little bit And then of course you can completely lock it out put it back to the middle or put it all the way open So it's nice having that three position lockout accessible from the bars here and not having to reach down uh, and move that. So I'm having to get used to that because a lot of the bikes I ride don't have that and I just I leave it open the whole time which you know may not be the, the best uh, solution so it's nice having that uh, option of uh, locking it out there. We also have a uh, dropper post so we've got the re uh, remote over here and uh, it's a Synchro uh, dropper post which is a brand owned by Scott. Uh, works really well, haven't had any problems with it, lots of travel on that and uh, fairly uh, good uh, saddle here little bit of gel but uh, 
pretty firm. Uh, what's what you would expect? Of course, that's easy enough to change, and that's also Synchros branded. And of course, the the saddle, the grips are easy to change. These are uh, Synchros uh, grips. They are locking, so there's a, a bolt in there to uh, keep it uh, from twisting. Um, I like them, but uh, I really like the Ergon, uh, some of the stuff they're doing for mountain bikes with a little bit of a, a flatter part on it for a little bit more ergonomics for longer rides. Easy enough to change, of course. The thing you won't have to change is the pedals, because they don't come with pedals. <laughs> uh, and that's actually not a bad idea, because that's the thing I complain about in most of my reviews, is, well, you know, I don't really like the pedals the manufacturer selected, I'll have to put my own on. Well, you will have to put your own on because it doesn't come with pedals, so I just threw some on for the uh, test ride. We are using Shimano's integrated 500 watt hour battery, so there's a little uh, port on the back here that you can use for plugging, uh, charging it on the bike if you wish. But of course you can also uh, remove it, uh, there's another little port here to put the key in to remove the battery from the bike if you wish to uh, charge it inside. Um, I like the fact that both of these plugs uh, have leashes on them so they're not going to fall out on you on the trail and you're not going to go uh, missing them. The power key is here to turn the bike on and uh, there while the bike is on or while the battery is off the bike you can see your current uh, battery level as well. There are instructions on the bike here as to how to remove the battery. I'll try to show that to you, but um, if you can charge it on the bike, it's not a bad idea. It's not difficult necessarily to remove the battery, but basically you put the key in, you turn it, you push it, and then you kind of grab the battery and pull it out. The thing is, unlike the Bosch power tube, once you unlock it, the battery can fall out. Now it's pretty tight in there, so right now it probably won't, but I imagine over time things will get a little bit looser and you just gotta watch. If you put the key in, be prepared because that battery can fall out. It's not a two-step uh, system like the uh, Bosch system. Okay, so I've got the key now. I can uh, show you the battery removal. There is a cover for the key slot, uh, which is great, and uh, it's also fairly well secured, and it has a leash, so you don't have to worry about losing it uh, when you remove it. Same with the charging port. There's a leash on that, and that just opens up, and you can charge the uh, battery on the bike. That's certainly really easy to do, um, but if you do want to charge it inside, you want to remove it from the bike, then you're basically putting the uh, key in here, turning, and then it's a little bit hard to do with one hand for the, uh, I'm holding the camera here, but you basically push in. That's going to release the uh, battery from the frame, and then you would basically pull it out. So see if I can do that with one hand. There we go. And so now you can see it's fairly tight. So uh, generally it's not going to drop right out, but it certainly could, so you want to make sure you've got a good hold on that before you release the key. You don't need the key to uh, reinsert the battery, which is nice. So you just need that for removing, and you can see uh, that uh, you just put that cover back on and you're good to go. Uh, what I do like about the uh, Shimano Steps uh, battery, though, the integrated battery here, is other than the Scott label on it, I don't think Scott has put anything else on the battery. So if you did want to buy a spare battery and bring it along, you should be able to do that uh, fairly easily. And uh, of course, remember to bring your key. Because we've got that integrated battery, we do have the ability to mount a water bottle cage, which is awesome. A lot of times that's a challenge on an e-bike. Let's take a look at the uh, Shimano Steps display up here. So the display has gone to sleep. The bike has turned itself off. So I just need to turn it back on here. There we go. Starts up. Now, uh, it's a beautiful color display. We've got the um, uh, battery level there, current speed, and the assistance that the bike is providing along with the level of assistance. Scott's uh, chosen to use these trigger shifters to adjust the levels, which is really cool. I mean, it's, it's really natural, intuitive uh, kind of riding. Um, one of the downsides though, well, let me just show you first. I'll press that. And it's, it's a real mechanical, like it's a mechanical feel, clicky, kind of system there so that's kind of cool so this makes it up and this makes it down so you can see I'm on eco now which is blue trail which is green and boost which is yellow there's only three levels plus off and uh, boost is maximum power of course trail is really a dynamic uh, kind of mode because you can get essentially the same amount of power from boost while you're in trail when you're pedaling really hard so this is kind of a, a mode you just set it and forget it and ride on that and the bike's just going to respond to what you're doing. If you're pedaling lightly, give you less power. Pedaling really hard, give you more power. If you do want less power just to really preserve the battery life, you can go down to Eco. Uh, in my test riding, I'm finding that that's uh, really very subtle, um, fairly steady. It's not, uh, whereas the trail really is uh, dynamic based on your riding. 
Uh, so it's nice having that color display. You can kind of just glance down. You don't have to read the word trail because when you're pedaling, this graph here is going to light up showing you how much power the bike is providing. Uh, I've got a protective film on the cover right now, so it's actually easier to read. Easy to read in bright daylight, which is nice. Nice and compact behind the bars. So Shimano wanted something that was really crash resistant, and they've managed to achieve that by putting it behind the bars here, nice and uh, small. Uh, my only complaint is with these, and, and this is what is starting to talk about before with these trigger shifters you know they're really cool but there's only two so if you want to cycle through this, the display you have to press the little button here now Scott's probably thinking you know really you shouldn't be staring down at your display and cycling through it while you're riding so it's easy enough when you stop to cycle through by pressing the button and change up what you're looking at now if you do want to be able to change that while you're riding which again they're probably thinking hey that's maybe not such a good idea you know, you could probably change these. Shimano does offer, instead of the trigger shifter style, they offer an up and down button with the third button that allows you to cycle through the display. But it, it would get a little crowded. You'd have to adjust the angles here. And I think it makes sense that Scott went with that because they've got their twin lock out there. And uh, they just wanted that really, you know, very intuitive, mechanical kind of clicky feel for the uh, display. This is also Bluetooth enabled. So the cool thing is you can download the Shimano app and you can actually go ahead and customize those levels so if you're feeling like you want to make some changes to the way those three levels are operating you can actually do that with the uh, app so that's pretty cool to get into the menuing system uh, actually let me cycle through the information on the display here first so we've got uh, our trip distance the odometer and again that I'm, I'm accessing through this little button here we've got winter gloves on this is gonna be really hard to activate just a heads up on that <laughs> uh, our range and that's dependent on the level of assistance so if I go down to eco I've got 73 trail 55 and boost 36 and that's an estimate based on the battery capacity and uh, the last few kilometers that I've uh, ridden trip time average speed maximum speed this is really cool that your cadence while you're riding it'll actually show you your cadence uh, clock which I need to set because it's obviously not midnight and uh, back to our current speed uh, to reset any of the trip data or getting into the menuing system you just press and hold the uh, button and now we can go to clear <coughs> and we use the trigger shifters over here to kind of advance through the menu so if i would go clear and then press the button then i can say yeah i want to reset my trip time distance and go to okay it's a bit of a uh you know i'm i'm pressing here to select and over here now if i didn't have the camera then i could do it with two hands it'd be a lot easier uh but, but with one hand it's a little bit of a pain so there's i can adjust the clock set up my bluetooth settings uh, we also have Bluetooth uh, LE, AMP for um, heart rate monitors and things like that. Uh, the bike doesn't come with lights, but the Shimano Step system supports lights. So if I wanted to add some lights, we've got a really cool 1000 uh, lumen e-bike light now, actually, that mounts to the uh, stem uh, bolts here and wires in. And it's really cool. It's uh, great for trail riding in the winter. Uh, brightness of the display, beep. Okay, so it's the first thing I do when I get a Shimano Steps bike is I come in here and I turn the beeping off. I don't know why I've never met anybody that goes, yeah, you know what? I love it that my bike beeps. Okay, Shimano, turn that off by default because really, uh, you know, uh, you've got this nice, I mean, there's no doubt that you've clicked the button. It's a mechanical click. We don't need it to confirm uh, that you're beeping, but you know, okay, uh, it's easy enough to turn off. Uh, you can change your units, uh, change your language, uh, adjust some of the uh, internal settings. If you're in some sort of protection mode, you can reset that and we'll just exit the display. So lots of information in there, nice and compact, really easy to read. And uh, fun, fun system to ride. I'm really liking that trail mode, especially. It's really very, very responsive. Uh, other things, we've got a fairly flat short stem here, which is nice. I'm trying to think of what else we've touched on the saddle and the dropper post. We've talked about these great tires. Uh, really nice looking bike overall, fun to ride. If I have missed anything or you have any questions, you can head over to our website at citrusycles.ca. So as I'm heading to the trailhead here, shortcut back road here and uh, 
I've been experimenting a little bit with the uh, Shimano Step system with the T8000 motor. It's really responsive, lots of torque. You know, when I hammer on the pedals, it's giving me that surge in power right away when I'm on the uh, trail mode. In fact, when I, you know, I'm working hard at it and I switch between trail, oops, got to pay attention to the rapids here, and uh, boost, you know, if I'm just kind of cruising along on trail, there we go. I do like that color coding, it's pretty awesome. Cruising along a trail, hit boost, I definitely notice a difference. But if I'm working at it in trail, and then go to boost, there's really no difference. Because when you're in trail, you're really pushing hard, essentially it's giving you power, it seems like. So really, I think I just leave it on trail the whole time for a ride, unless, you know, trying to get some longer distances in, then I drop that down to eco. But even eco gives you, you know, a fair bit of power. Maybe not as responsive as trail, so when you really push it hard on eco, you're not going to get a big boost like you do when you're on uh, trail. Yeah, eco is a little bit more subdued, it's just, it's there, it's helping, uh, but let me put it up to uh, trail, and yeah, now you notice as soon as you uh, provide more power to the pedals, you're getting a lot more power from the bike. So really, uh, you know, I think eco is useful when you're trying to get longer distances, or, you know, you just want a little bit of assistance on the ride, and not needing that big push. She said, got a bit of a climb ahead on the road here. And I thought what I'd do is uh, just do a quick recording of this because sometimes people ask me about noise from the motor now. I really don't notice. I mean, I've been riding e-bikes long enough that, yeah, there's a little bit of uh, noise there, but a lot of times road noise, wind noise, trail noise kind of overcomes it. So generally on the trail, you're not really going to notice. But I'm going to pop it into boost for this uh, hill here. There we go. And uh, on pavement, you're definitely going to hear the whine of the motor as we get into those higher levels of assistance. Especially pedaling at higher RPMs, you'll hear it as well. But once you get onto the trail, I don't really notice it. I don't notice this being particularly quieter or louder than other motors. I should point out that's a relatively steep hill and no problem climbing it there at all with the uh, uh, Shimano Steps E8000 on boost. The things I've been noticing as I've been riding towards the trail here is uh, the Shimano system doesn't have shift detection like the Bosch system. So I'm so used to riding Bosch bikes, I just ride normally as I'm shifting, cuts the power, uh, so I'm not bashing the gears when I'm shifting. Bosch is really the only system that does that. Well, other than TQ, they have a mechanical shift detection system, which is really cool. But uh, with the Shimano, it's not doing that. So I do have to adjust my riding style a little bit to remember I do need to ease up quite a bit more when I'm shifting so that I'm not getting the power of the motor a lot of torque on the drivetrain as I shift, so that's just something to keep in mind. And I do notice that, uh, again with the Bosch, because it's got the shift detection, I'm slowing my pedaling down and shifting, but not completely stopping. Whereas I'm finding with the Shimano, I almost have to consciously, not necessarily stop, but really pause a bit when shifting so that that motor stops, because otherwise it just kind of keeps giving you full power. The other thing that's taking me a little bit of getting used to here is the uh, shifter, the thumb shifter isn't, uh, well the second shifter isn't uh, bi-directional and I'm used to kind of having a bi-directional so I'm used to pulling with my index finger and pushing with my thumb. I have to push them both with my thumb, not a big deal, just something to get used to. It's great having these two or three millimeter rotor brakes, very responsive, lots of modulation. I didn't have to be too concerned going down the stair bypass there with the uh, 
steep cliff drop off on the other side. And uh, I've ridden quite a few bikes with this Fox suspension. I'm really enjoying it. I really do like Fox, especially this e-bike specific uh, suspension. It's working really great on the uh, roots and rocks and stuff. Overall, the bike handles really well. I'm really enjoying uh, the geometry of the bike. It's nice wide bars. Uh, this is a large size, I'm about six feet. It seems to fit me really well. Uh, the drop close enough to have. The bike just, uh, it wants to play. It wants to ride through technical sections and just, yeah, it's, it's one of those bikes that you have that you're going to just want to keep riding it. And, uh, you know, actually it kind of encourages you to keep improving your skills because you can kind of really push yourself maybe into some riding styles that you haven't uh, worked on before. So it's, it's a fun bike that can really grow with you, but it's also really easy to try for that basic bike. away from you with all the technical aspects of just riding and having fun. So coming down was fun. Let's do a little bit more climbing here now. Starting to get more used to the shifting, I've found that I can uh, kind of back off the power to the pedals and still handle that shift while cutting out the power from the motor for really nice smooth shifts. It just takes a little bit of awareness and getting used to. Lots of torque from the E8000, drive unit there, no problems climbing the hill. Getting used to the dropper post placement, used to a uh, lever under the brake lever, which is interesting because I had to teach myself not to activate the brake at the same time I was squeezing the uh, dropper post. On this one, it's a thumb up above, and I kind of like it there, just again taking a little bit to get used to. Climbing this hill, cool. I do hear the uh, motor a little bit more again. Now you can multi-shift with this drivetrain. Uh, you know, it's less than ideal if you can avoid it. It's actually. Uh, a little bit harder on your drivetrain, but it's possible, which is great. And really 
easily climbing this hill. No problem. Lots of power. I haven't even put it up to boost yet. Let me try that. Yeah. Don't really notice a difference because it was already uh, working full power on it. All right, so no problem climbing. And that's the great thing. <laughs> Obviously, I was still working at it. That's the great thing about an electric mountain bike. You know, a lot of people say it's cheating, but you just gotta come try one. You'll find out you're working just as hard. You can work as hard as you choose, which is nice. But it also means you can get those longer rides in or you can head up and down the mountain a few more times. Or, you know, for me, a lot of times I only have half an hour on a regular bike, it's like, oh, it's not worth it. But with my e-bike, I can cover a lot of ground, you know, still climb, come back down the hill and have a lot of fun, even if it's just on my lunch break or something like that. All right, so if you have more questions about this bike, head over to our website at citruscycles.ca.